today. Anthony Edwards gave us a potential dunk of the year last night. That after recently hitting his head on the rim on a game-saving chase down block. So, Paul Pierce, exactly how good is Anthony Edwards right now, and how big a threat does he help make the Minnesota Timberwolves to win the West? You know what, Skip? I think what we've seen from him since Carl Towns has gone down, they've, been, they've went four and two, and he's elevated his game. I he think has. it's time to start putting him in the MVP conversation. I mean, they're half a game from first place, and why not? I mean, it seems like every single night he's given us something special. Mm. I mean, the block, the dunk you seen last night. I mean, he almost identically posterizes AD the same way, but misses that one. Yep. It's just like everything this kid's do, his charisma, his style, is saying not only, I said it early, face of the league, number one team in the league, this guy, they're, they are a real threat because he's taking the next step to superstardom. And somebody's going to be pissed off this year that's not going to make first team all NBA because this man right here, Ant-Man, should be in there on the first team. Mm. When you talk about Joker, Tatum, those two come to mind off the top. You got to put those two in. Then after that, where do you go? You got to go Ant-Man. He has to be in there. Luka Doncic. Mm -hmm. And for that fifth guy? Okay, see. Uh, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Shea. That's my five right there. Okay. And there's going to be some people pissed off. There's going to be a player or two that's pissed off that's not going to be in there. But this man right here, he deserves to be in the MVP talks. And this team is a real threat to Denver Nuggets uh, in the playoffs because they host the number one defensive team. Mm. Rudy Gobert's probably going to win defensive player of the year. A guy who you can put on Joker to kind of stifle him in the paint as far as, you know, not letting him get easy opportunities right at the rim because I'm tired of seeing Joker just get the <laughs> offensive rebound, tip it to himself, and lay it in. <laughs> you know, and, and you yeah. got a guy who can kind of offset that a little bit. Yeah. You know, not saying he can stop him at all, but you got some bodies that you, you can do. throw. And so I think Minnesota, with Anthony Edwards playing the way that he plays, is maybe the only threat to Denver in the West. Mm. See, they got, right now, they're the fifth best odds behind the Nuggets, the Clippers, the Thunder, and the Suns. Now, we haven't really seen the Suns at full strength. The Thunder's still kind of young. You know, the Clippers are, I don't know what they're doing. They're kind of starting to unravel to a little bit here. The Clippers are the figure. third best odds. Mm. I mean, they, they're the second best odds. It's Clippers. According, mm. uh, in the West, yeah, plus 290. Behind the Nuggets at plus 145. Wow. So... When you start to look at that, I think, and I understand what you're saying about Rudy Gobert being able to, to neutralize to a degree the Joker, but we say that all the time about somebody doing something to him, and then he comes yeah, out the I game mean, with 28, 10, and 6 or I something. Mean, but if you want anybody on him, you want the defensive player of the year on him. Mm. Yeah, but, then he, <laughs> but, but, but he still is going to get his regardless. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So when I start to look at these teams... Minnesota is such a young team with, even though Rudy Gobert's older, and Cat, I don't know what his situation is after his knee situation, you know, when is he coming back? You're missing that. They're such a young team, and when I say young team, the main guy, the leader of the team is Anthony Edwards, who's young, who hasn't arrived to the point where you, you say, okay, no matter what, he's just going to put it on his back and get there. He may still be able to get his, but when you're talking about going up against the Nuggets, an experienced veteran team, they can stay healthy like the Clippers, I don't put much into the Thunder. It's exciting, but they're a young team, too. I got more faith in the Lakers as a healthy team going coming out of the West than I do Minnesota. I just do. You know, if it, if it comes down to it, because as you mentioned multiple times, Skip, when they play the Denver Nuggets, they're this close. This close. They just haven't gotten over the hill Yet, the last four and a half, five minutes of the game, they accelerate on the offensive end, and the Lakers disintegrate on the offensive end as well as on defense. So, I'm not sure, though, Paul, that Minnesota's going to really be hanging around uh, 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 in the second round, uh, third round. At some point, we got to get past these old teams, the Lakers and Golden State, because just like we said with San Antonio, Golden State was that young team like Minnesota and OKC. Mm -hmm. And... Now they got over that hump. So at some point, these young teams are going to break through. And you got to let go of these older teams, like the Lakers and Golden State. And it's going to be one of these teams, Minnesota or Golden State. We see this in every era. 
to where when you have a team growing and they have a young superstars, they eventually break through. Minnesota has already had playoff experience. Uh -huh. They got a young superstar. They got three all-stars on one team and a veteran point guard with good coaching and good role players. Yeah. So I believe at some point they're going to break through, and this could be the year. Like we saw Golden State take the next step, step and then eventually become a dynasty. But do they have... They got clay. star power. Do they got clay? They got, they star, got, they got a superstar over Do they there. got curry? They do got they a top have five player. Draymond Green with well, an attitude they were, like that. They got the pieces to become that. Mm. All right, just for the record, Denver is playing at Minnesota tonight, and mm -hmm. Denver is a seven and a half point favorite because there's no cat. No cat. And I don't think Gobert is going to play. He didn't play the last game. He's got a rib strain. He, he's like AD. There's always something, right? There's yeah. always something going on. But I talked about how bad the Lakers are on defense. This Minnesota team is serious on defense. In, in the individual defensive win shares, they have four in the top 14. That's sensational. You don't right. see that That's very often because Gobert is two and Ant-Man is five in the league. And de this is defense. Defense. And Cat is 11. And Conley is 14th on this list, which shocked me because I don't think of him as a defender, but he's a ball stealer and he's, a, he's an irritant and he just he's smart. He's always in the right place at the right time. So they do have a high-quality point guard. But here's been my, my trouble with, with Minnesota – until this moment is. We talk about having that dog in him or him or him. I know Carl Anthony scored 50 in the All-Star game, but I just don't know about him in the biggest moments in the biggest games. I'm not sure about him. I'm definitely not sure about Rudy Gobert. He seems like a nice guy, but when push comes to shove, he gets shoved too much, right? In the biggest moments in the biggest games. We're talking about winning the West. Mm -hmm. And this brings me... To Anthony Edwards, he's 22 years of age. Has he arrived, arrived? I mean, is he a superstar? Because if he's the guy you're talking about right now, in this mix of, of defensive prowess that they have, defensive firepower, he would be the one who's going to have to take it over the top. Absolutely. In, in the biggest moments of game five and six and seven, is he ready to do that and that and that? Because he's the one I would trust on this team to make those kind of plays. Well, that's the question, yeah. Skip. I mean, superstars are yeah. born in the playoffs. Yeah. We can say as much as we want to about the regular season and the numbers are going to be the numbers and the highlights are going to be mm -hmm. the highlights, but we know the superstars, the true superstars are born in the playoffs and has that potential. So we have to wait and see if he can really do that. We can't say he hasn't done it. He didn't do it last year, and he's still young. He's only 22. Listen to what we're saying about a kid that's 22, 22 years old. 14. Can he take him over the top? Yep. Can he be the face of the league? He's 22 years old, and we're already saying that. That just shows how far he's coming, how great he is at no, this stage in his he, career. He, he is a, a great player, and I believe over time, like you say, those things will come. But right now, as we stand today, I just don't... That's the only question. Bro. I just don't see much like you say, Skip. You got Cat who... You don't know what you're going to get. I, Rudy I don't Gobert, know. yeah, defensively, but yeah. you're trading off the offensive side of the ball with him. I mean, he ain't going to give you much on offense. He's going to play hard-nosed defense. So that's a liability in itself yeah. that I'm giving up whatever I'm getting from Joker, but you're not, you not matching him on the scoring end. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. a problem. But I think Anthony hey. Edwards could potentially be the guy that all of a sudden he becomes – a Kobe Bryant. He becomes a Michael Jordan. We've been waiting for Tatum in Boston to kind of... Yeah. He got him there, but when he got him there, he kind of disappeared a little bit. We want him to take the next well, step. you just said a mouthful. You, you just put him in the same sentence with a Kobe or a Jordan? Well, I'm just wow. saying, they, when you think about it, it took Jordan a minute. It took Jordan a minute. Now, we done had this argument before, Skip, and then eventually Jordan got over the hump. The rest was history. It took Kobe a little bit. He got shacked, and all of a sudden, he did. got over the hump. And then they disappeared for a couple of years. Then Powell came. We got over the hump again. That's all I'm saying. This dude has that type of talent. You know, you talk about his college days. He wasn't efficient. He wasn't good he wasn't. at shooting the basketball. He, he but just... then he just keep getting better okay. and better I, I, I'm going to give you that because he has improved as a basketball player. Yes. And when I watched him at Georgia, he was just an athlete running around, just making athletic plays. Yeah. He shot 40% from the floor at Georgia. He shot 29% from three. And I'm like, really? 
I, I see the explosiveness, the, the raw sort of, he, he played with, with kind of a rage to his game, which I love. Mm -hmm. But now I'm seeing numbers because he's shooting 47% from the floor and he's shooting 37% from three. That will work. He, his That's free throws right. are up to 84%. That'll work. That's 10% more than LeBron oh, no. makes from the free throw. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, <laughs> LeBron never improved. We're 21 years in, and he never improved his Stop. free throws. This kid has improved dramatically at the free throw line because they're free, right? <laughs> they're free. But when you, you, you know, know, a lot of times I think what we do is when we try and compare guys, we look at the end product opposed to where they were in their fourth year, their third year. That's how you compare somebody. You don't compare. You yeah. can't sit there and say, well, this kid is, is, is going to be this. Well, it's not finished yet, but he certainly, his trajectory